my chicken nuggets. It's been a little bit. I skipped my week's upload last week because I live in Oregon and the entire state is on fire. <laughs> so that hasn't been super conductive to me wanting to film myself or talk or get out of my bed really. We're safe in Portland, but it's very smoky, very hazardous air quality right now and we're just kind of waiting to see if we have to evacuate, but the likelihood of that seems pretty slim right now, so we're lucky. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about DNFing, which means books you don't finish because they're not driving with you. It's something that I rarely do in my reading. I picked out one, two, three, four, six books to talk about today about why I didn't DNF them and that's the only ones I could find in my entire book collection. So I would say it's pretty rare that I don't finish a book and that's for a lot of reasons. I mean one sheer stubbornness I guess I would say and then like waging how much time you've already invested in a book to not carry that like obligation of figuring out the rest of the story out. It's hard for me to grapple with and sometimes I'm like, okay, I'll just give it like one more chapter to see if this is like, you know, if I'm actually liking this book. And I just keep telling myself that over and over again until I finish the book. So it's rare for me to DNF books. And I also feel like it's unfair for me as a book reviewer to review them when I do DNF them. And that's like one of the parts I like the most about reading is kind of synthesizing my thoughts about it and giving like a critical assessment of what I thought about the book. So it's like not fair to the author if I'm like that book sucked. It, I'm like that book sucked if I didn't finish out the rest of the book if that makes sense. But I'm also trying to get to a spot where I'm like you know what I'm too old not to DNF books I don't I don't like. <laughs> there are too many good books out there waiting for me for me to spend my time in a story I'm not liking, if that makes any sense. So I would love to know what your book habits are, how you feel about DNFing, if it's a moral struggle for you as well, or if you're very pro. I think I'm leaning towards the side of being very pro lately, and hopefully when the world returns to normal, I can sell some books that I bought that I didn't end up loving. Because um, there's nothing more annoying when you buy like a new expensive hardback that's a new release and then it's a flop. We're gonna talk about some books. We're gonna talk about why I DNF them. Just an at a glance, you know, this isn't gonna be like a takedown of these authors and these works. It's just gonna give you an example of how I decided I didn't wanna continue with them. First up is Godshot. This is a new release and a little quip on the back says something like white oleander crossed with geek love. That sounds great to me. <laughs> I love both of those books. I thought this was terrible. Characters weren't well developed. It felt like very simplistic caricatures of poverty and a mindset of being in a cult or the mindset of wanting to believe in something so bad. I got to about a page like 120 on this and I was so, I had such a bad taste in my mouth after the main character has an incest plot with her cousin and not in a way that seemed to make any sense to me, to the plot. That I was like, you know what? This has 200 more pages to go and I don't care. I don't care how, how it's gonna turn out. I'm not invested in any of these characters. And the writing was very mediocre to me. You can't have bad characters in bad writing, you know? It was a no for me, dog. The Starless Sea. I love The Night Circus. I had such a fun time reading that book. It was like the perfect amount of magical realism to me and I was really excited for this book to come out. I got to a page 100, 104, that's where my little cover tab is, and I tapped out. <laughs> Again, this is like a 500 page book and I just absolutely could not with this amount of mystery, magic, uh, like it was too fantasy based for me. The weird shit about finding the keys and they're in that labyrinth world and you know, you get your tongue cut out. I just, I couldn't. This was my first book of the year in 2020 and it like scarred me for reading for a few months. <laughs> uh, big bummer to me and it was like, yeah, $30 cause this is a giant honkin' hardback. Can't wait to sell it. This is another book that did really well commercially that I DNF. 
worked and I know a lot of people love this book and I didn't I'm sorry I only got to page 60 on this to chapter 6 is where I, I stopped I picked this up at the recommendation of the internet and I didn't like the writing I thought it was really simplistic and I'm sure I mean I watched the TV show so I know this advances but I thought the writing around like art and the mother being an artist and Pearl herself was just kind of like simplistic and not super compelling to me and I didn't have to I'm sorry another book that was almost $30 that I cannot wait to resell next up is arbitrary stupid goal I dnf this at page 30. <laughs> I'm not like a big New York City stan I guess it's not I spent a lot of time in New York my family's based on the east coast and our carnival played on very close to New York City quite frequently so I was there a lot growing up um, but it's not something I romanticize heavily. I didn't like the form of this book um, they're all kind of like little vignettes very like consumable passages mixed with like some mixed media of this family along with some drawings which I think sounds good in theory but I just wasn't invested in her bohemian childhood you know like I'm just I don't care about that phase of the village in New York so I don't really even know why I picked this up to begin with but kind of a weird format for a memoir for me and I'm sure it gets better but I don't want to stick around to find out I feel like this is another book people loved <laughs> women talking women talking I stopped reading this at page 17 <laughs> see I mean it, it almost feels unfair to judge a book that quickly but sometimes you just know sometimes you're just like not in the headspace for a story or you can tell the writing's not going to be for you and this is 1000% that kind of booked me super boring um I think a book about the Mennonite culture could be interesting but the writing of this was super like removed and dry and wasn't I didn't feel invested in anyone or anything that was happening from the get-go uh another very recommended book from the internet that I I said not on to so that's it that's my little list of books that I still own that I dnf'd that I haven't donated or went to pals to exchange them for store credit I'm sure they all get better but I don't really care about finding out you know yeah I'm interested to seeing how my booktube friends feel about this subject because as book reviewers and book enthusiasts and people who recommend books to others I'd love to know what your moral standing is about DNFing and if you have as much of a you know conundrum when faced with that awful task of should I continue or should I not I think I'm pro the older I'm getting the more pro I am. Life is short, baby. Great. See you in the comments. See you later. Goodbye.